Okay, hello guys. Today, I want to apologize, one, for being gone as long as I have been. There was some family stuff I had to tend to, and then I had some medical stuff I had to figure out, and now I'm back. And like I said before, last time, every time I want to do this daily, something happens. Life uh, finds a way <laughs> to make it not daily. So I think um, right now, I'm just going to do once a week, and I'm going to go back to that. So I wanted to jump right in with the Ravi Zacharias scandal that has gone on. A lot has happened since the last time I posted, so we're just going to start with this one. Uh, Alright, so I have to first start this off with, I have I had a bias towards this, because Ravi Zacharias was the first Christian I ever heard or talked to who had any sort of logical anything going on. Most of the time when you talk to Christians, there isn't a whole lot of that, unfortunately. Um, now, I don't know if that's just because of where I live or what I have since met several Christians who are more logical in things and think about things deeply and, and all that. But when I first was saved, there wasn't a whole lot of that. So reading this is a, was a little hard for me. I am grossed out by it because this is wrong on so many levels. And then on top of that, there's a, there was somewhat I read something where it said that he just refused to give his phone over to people during the investigation to prove or disprove what he had done to me that is such a how does someone get to just say no I'm not going to give you my phone during an investigation like why wasn't his phone subpoenaed or you know why wasn't there any sort of law done to get this from him and so that is something I don't understand. It's the idea of somebody who is under investigation, you know, saying, I'm just not going to give that to you unless it's within their rights to do so. All right. And then just not having to do something like that is mind blowing to me. Okay. This, in this situation, the people were alleging that he used his phone to do a lot of this. So who investigated this? I mean, I think stuff fell there. He's obviously the one that did the wrong thing. And I'm pretty heartbroken by that. And I think that's where I'm going to stop there. Just some of the stuff that I'm reading is absolutely mind blowing to me. <clears throat> I'm going to read this right here from Christianity Today. It said, Ravi engaged in a series of extensive measures to conceal his behavior from his family, colleagues, and friends. However, we also recognize that in situations of prolonged abuse, there often exists significant structural policy and cultural problems. We were trusted by our staff, our donors, and the public to mentor, oversee, and ensure the accountability of Ravi. And in this, we have failed. Okay, so yes, they did fail. This is something I don't understand about Christianity. Or when I see when things get to a certain size, it's not even really just in Christianity. It's more like we as people organize to a certain size and then we all of a sudden, leaders lose it. Um, people start to just trust leaders like they're God or something. And that is not a Christian structure, okay? The guy, so to compare this to something in the Bible, King David did something similar. Obviously, he didn't have a cell phone. But King David sent out a man to die so that he could have his wife not marry her or anything, just to have sex with her because he saw her and had lust towards her. Sorry, my if you can hear that, my dog is back here snuffling. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. So, you know, we have examples. And, and so King David, though, was called out. There, a man, a priest, came and called King David out for what he did. Christianity does not have a structure where you don't question leadership, where leadership is above and beyond, you know, investigation, where it's above and beyond being called out. I mean, the structure of the church is that of you have a pastor, but you're also supposed to have deacons and elders, and all of these people are supposed to be our checks and balances towards each other. 
I don't know what happened to make the Christian church go away from a biblical structure of this, but this kind of stuff has got to stop. I am just, I hate seeing this because that means he had, he probably didn't have anybody checking on him, you know, things like that. I, I know that I became a little bit weary of some things because his wife did not travel with him. And for me, that's a big, big red flag. You're, you're as much traveling as you're doing, your wife should travel with you. There's really no reason, especially since he, you know, in the Christian religion, the man is the breadwinner. He does lead the household, etc. So, I mean, just, there's a lot of things that failed here more than just in his, how do I say this? It's more than just in his whole structure and culture of his business. There was something else going on here. Now, me personally, do I look at this and go, well, now I can't believe anything Robbie Zachariah said? No. If a crazy person told me that, you know, grass is green, the sky is blue, I wouldn't question that the sky is blue and the grass is green. I would say, yeah, okay, they've got that right. <laughs> the truth is the truth no matter who says it. And a lie is a lie no matter who says it to. So... I just, I'm sad about this. It actually makes me angry because I keep running into this and I keep seeing things like, I hear things sometimes out here in the world whenever I just listen to Christians talk or have conversations with them about, you know, well, no, but this guy's the leader. Well, so he should be able to do whatever he needs to do. Uh, no, not anything. Our leaders are constricted to a purpose. They're constricted to a way to do that thing. And for some reason, churches nowadays want to get outside of that structure. They want to get outside of the restrictions that our leadership has. They want to do all of that. And I don't know why. If you want to know what that structure is, uh, I go over it a little bit more in a video that where, oh, I can't, Andy Savage, I actually provide like the biblical structure and there is no time at all where a person is supposed to be the lone decider of anything. All right. They are, so we, the way things are set up for anything. And I realize he's not a pastor. I realize he isn't any of that. Okay. For me though, if I'm setting something up like this, where people are going to listen to me and I'm going to be a leader of some sort of thought or something, I am going to have people around me to help keep me straight. <laughs> I'm going to be talking to people. I'm going to be, you know, I just, as the bigger you get, sorry to make sure she wasn't chewing on anything. <laughs> the bigger you get, the more restrictions you should have as a leader. Not, you should not be freer. Okay, so it's, this is just, this is also my, argument against big government. The bigger the government gets, the more restrictions the government should have on itself. The less it should be involved in what people do on a daily basis. The less it should have. Because of this kind of stuff right here, if one man, and we see it over and over and over and over again, outside of Christianity, inside Christianity, doesn't matter where, we see it over and over again. If one man having this kind of organization that he has, can do this. What do you think a government as large as even just America's is capable of? 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 100,000 times worse, okay? I am just really sad because when Robbie Zacharias came along, I heard him on the radio. I was like, oh my gosh, look, here's somebody answering the questions that I am thinking about. I hadn't quite asked yet because it didn't really seem like I could, right? I had that experience in church where I can't ask certain questions or certain questions are just off or, well, if you were here every Sunday, you know, guys, I get sick, okay? Uh, there's all kinds of things I've experienced in the church. This does not in any way shake my faith in God. It doesn't in any way say the Bible isn't true. 
this man, Ravi Zacharias, did not follow the Bible. <laughs> he did not do the things he was supposed to do. Is he a logical man who helped me sort of get to the point where I want to think logically about Christianity, where my questions about it were finally sort of answered, or I finally had a way of thinking towards things? Because like I said, initially when you become saved, you have like this moment of just like pure joy. <laughs> Because that's what God gives you, gives you a sense of pure joy. And even though I'm upset about this and everything, I still have that joy. That joy's still there. It shows why the Bible is right. Why when the Bible says, you know, you have a leadership who is in, you know, they don't just get to do whatever. They have to answer to uh, elders and then they have to answer to the people underneath them. It is not just you get to do what you want or you have ultimate authority and things like that. And he does get to decide once he's in that position, he gets to decide where the church is going, but he does not have this authority where he can tell you what God will say in like certain situations. One of the things that Robbie Zacharias did was tell them, you know, well, God will bless you for doing this for me and all this stuff. No, no. God never blesses you for going outside of the design that he has, okay? And just because somebody is a leader, just because somebody is smart, doesn't mean you can't tell them, no, you're wrong. Because that happens all the time in the Bible also. All right, and so I don't want anybody else to get discouraged by this. This is bad. It's not good. But I'm glad it happened. I think it's ultimately a good thing in a lot of ways. Um, I'm sorry. I'm heartbroken for the people who went through it. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I wish that that never happened to them. I wish Robbie had never done it. But for me, this is also proof, once again, that whenever you don't follow what the Bible says, people get hurt. You hurt what you were doing, the work you were doing. It gives the world just like one more thing to be like, oh, look how awful you guys are. Even though, you know, it's not, a, a man does not make up Christianity. But anyway, that's my two cents on this. I just wanted to talk about it. There's lots of things I'm going to post, like, I'm going to leave you three links where you can read about it if you want to. Like I said, I'm not happy about it. I'm quite sad that this happened. I don't, I wish people would just look at the Bible and read it and structure their things, whatever it is, <laughs> business, life, you know, leadership things around what it says. Oh gosh, I am burpy today. Sorry. Because that is what's going to put us where we need to be. It is not... You know, anytime you go to do something like this and you end up being a business, they want you to use a worldly business model. Well, you can use certain ideas, but your overall arguing ideas need to be one coming from the Bible, coming from that Christian perspective. Otherwise, it's no good. The, the, uh, the phrase for me, he wouldn't give up his phone. Well, who was he under, you know, who did he answer to? Because he's supposed to answer to somebody. Even in our churches, the pastor does have to answer to the elders and the people. So, something went wrong there. Lots of somethings probably, really. But I just want you to know, or I just want to reiterate really, because if you're a Christian watching this, you probably already know. Our leaders are not infallible. They're not these 100% I represent God guys. These guys have a job. They have a position to do that job. And that's it. And that job basically is to guide the church where it needs to go. That doesn't mean that they get to ultimately decide what anything in the Bible means. You can disagree. You can question them. You can say, no, I'm not going to participate in that and still be part of the body of Christ. Just maybe you don't participate in this thing, okay? It really gets to me. When you can read the Bible and see how wonderful things can be because you are using the tools that God gave you for success, 
things like this, they're just so un, they're so gross and unnecessary and, you know, where were all the Christians around him doing or thinking, you know, it's just tough. It's hard. I think I'm just going to leave it there, guys. Remember to read your Bible and pray, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.